The theme we're going to cover today, as you might expect with a, with a focus on medicine, is life. Preserving life, saving life, defending life, which is something that was done here in the early months of the pandemic. So, with all that in mind, we're going to take a look because this is the place where a lot of new technology was tested out, a lot of new techniques were tried, a lot of the early science for the COVID-19 pandemic was developed here, began here in China. So this is the logical place to have a giant medical exposition. At the very beginning of the process, which is testing. Now, we all know the importance of testing for COVID-19. It's the first line of defense against the spread of the virus. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Welcome to some official booths. And this is our very much 100 square meter to demonstrate our mobile solution with the nuclear ad detection lab. We have very much instruments right now we are using for this uh, our coronavirus diagnostic. And this is on the mobile. So it's a very unique because mobile, most labs are very much installed. This is could be run on the road. What is the advantage of having a mobile lab? Like what are some of the uses of a mobile lab where a, a regular traditional laboratory might not be able to perform. Exactly, exactly. Because right now, you know, during the coronavirus, is, uh, testing is uh, very much needed from the government, right? So a lot of uh, like county level, they cannot be really accessible to normal labs. So it can be very accessible to county level people for massive detection, as well as future prevention and control. This is a very much a mobile lab. That's why you see very much compact reaging storage and the preparation area. So this QPCR you might see for, um, a little bit different from the news. This is a compact one. Why it's compact is this is a mobile lab. So this one basically you can test 2,000 uh, testing a day. But if you mix it, if it's a mix of the samples into one, for instance, 10 samples into one. So for this instruments, you can do one day on um, 20,000. So the volume suddenly, you know, gone up, but accuracy is no problem. So this, from, from any ordinary observation, might look like a regular ambulance. We, we heard earlier about the negative pressure system in the mobile lab. That's to keep a seal so that no contaminated air gets in and no contaminated air leaves. So obviously there's, that's important if you're dealing with infectious diseases, COVID-19 being the prime example. What we have right now is a negative pressure ambulance. So. This whole, this whole cab, this whole cabin is sealed and it's a similar negative pressure system that you see in, in hospitals that handle infectious diseases and in patients with high risk of infection. Inside the cabin of the ambulance or the hospital room, if it's a negative pressure room, the pressure is lower than the air pressure outside. This is the filter and the fan that spins and pushes out, pushes out the air. Uh, and filters it and cleans it so that any air leaving the ambulance is totally clean and totally sterile. And there's a seal created in the whole chamber so that there's no air entering in. So there's no chance of infecting infection on the inside or the outside. And if you move over to the right here, you see the oxygen tanks are for this ventilator. So ventilator is obviously very important for someone suffering from respiratory illness. In a clean, sterile environment where you don't run the risk of infecting whoever's treating you or anybody on the outside. Again, we're talking about a mobile, mobile technology. We just saw the mobile testing and now we're seeing mobile transport with the same technology that was in that mobile lab. So it's not just about developing new, new technologies, it's also about making existing technology smaller, mobile, more useful, more applicable. <laughs> nice to have you. Hi. So tell us a little bit about the butterfly. Sure. Um, so in butterfly, we have developed a proprietary ultrasound on chip technology. Once you once you open this app, um, this brings up the ultrasound images right on your screen, real time. It has many different kinds of um, organs that you can look. We have it all in this one probe. So what are some of the advantages of having a, a device like this? So you can imagine, you know, some of the most um, classical examples, like a doctor that's in the emergency department, they need to handle lots of patients, you know, having different complications. So with this one probe and very fast um, access to the image, that can make them make decisions very, very quickly. 
and that's critical to save lives. We saw an American company, we saw a Chinese company, this is actually a Japanese company. So what they've got are, are small portable defibrillator machines. So the key area now is before the EMTs get here, before the emergency medical professionals get here, you, you keep people alive, you keep people in a relatively stable state so they can be rescued by a professional. So the challenge here is building a, a piece of technology that can do the same job but that anybody can use. This is the technology that's being installed in subway stations around China. We hope to see more of that. There are about, there's about 500,000 deaths by heart attack in China per year, which is just about one per minute in the whole year. So whatever you can do to keep that from happening as much as possible, this is a way to do it. So we're happy to see this, this kind of technology get adopted and get developed. So tell us a little bit about the Da Vinci. Okay, this is the newest single port Da Vinci uh, robotic system. The system actually provides surgeons with what we call robotic assisted technology uh, designed for a deep and narrow access to the tissues inside the body. So it will ha actually have a very small incision, single incision, and you can insert three wristed instruments inside human body and one 3D HD camera head inside human body to offer a really good, a great you know, vision and also control for the surgeon to do the surgery. With a little ring toss, tiny, tiny, tiny movements. There you go. Because you need, you need very precise movements and very precise actions in surgery, so this is what we're looking at. We appreciate you guys coming in and joining us for this. We hope you learned something. We hope you enjoyed the experience. Again, just a tiny, tiny sample of what you can see here. So we hope we were able to help you get a glimpse into what's going on here. It might give you some interesting insights on how the present, past, and future of pandemic response and emergency treatment is being done. And we hope you enjoyed it. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.